Uh, hello, everybody. Um, I'm going here to talk about uh, how to write uh, multimedia applications with Relu. Um, the talk will, in this talk, I will uh, see how basically two uh, use cases, two examples, which is Totem and the new Gnome Music. So I'm going to explain how these two applications are using uh, Grillo, what are the problems they are trying to solve, and how Grillo helps. Uh, and later, I will also talk about a couple of um, new use cases that uh, people can uh, have when they implement their ap application. So, yes, let's we start with an introduction. So, basically, um, when you're writing a multimedia application, uh, one of the things you need to solve is how I get access to the content, right? Uh, there are some times that the content is on local disk, but other times the content is on some web service, you know? Um, basically, each web service has its, its own API. So, for instance, in the case of YouTube, you have a very clear uh, specification of the API. So when you are writing an application for um, YouTube, you take that uh, API and you write your application, right? The problem is when you want uh, your application to get access to other uh, several uh, sources at the same time. For instance, the, you want to play uh, content from YouTube and also from Vimeo. So if you check each uh, source or web service have a different API. Uh, even when you want to do is seems quite simple, like, okay, search for videos or, or list all the videos available. But even, even though, so you need to uh, write uh, different APIs. This is, uh, becomes worse when you try to integrate more information from other uh, sources. For instance, let's say you are writing your multimedia, your media player application, you are um, playing a song, and you want to show, for instance, the lyrics of the song, or you are uh, implementing the a set of box uh, when you get content from any place that stores movies, and now you get want to show information about the movie, like the title or who is the director or this kind of information, or even subtitles. So basically, you need to go to the service. Each one provides a different um, API, and you need to integrate everything in, in your uh, in your application. Um, this is done for all applications. I mean, uh, what one user does for one application, another user does, must do also for a different application. So, you know, there are no sharing of, of, of this uh, knowledge or this um, structure. So, ideally, uh, there should be just a common API. I mean, for instance, YouTube, Vimeo, and all those services use the same API. So, that would ideally, uh, have a, a really simple way of integrating more information, you know? When I add new information, for instance, I have there the subtitles, but I could have another service that provides, for instance, uh, uh, for instance, uh, cover arts for your music, or uh, biography for your uh, main uh, favorite artist. So, how to make this more uh, easier to do? So, here is where Grillo tries to help. Uh, basically, Guru is, um, is a framework that uh, is very focused on making uh, discovery of content and getting access to the content quite simple. And it does because it provides a single high-level API uh, to access all the, the sources of information. So, for instance, when you are using Grillo and you get access to YouTube, uh, the API is exactly the same, like getting access, for instance, for uh, Vimeo, or getting access to Flickr, for instance, or getting access to even your, your local disk, right? So basically, it's a matter of uh, supporting or more sources in your in your program. And the other part is like is that um, Grillo provides a way of being standard. Uh, all the sources are actually um, plugins that uh, developers can write separately of your program. You can plug them in your your system, I, you automatically are starting using that. So, for instance, if I now write, a, for instance, applying for daily motion, it will be easy to integrate in my application because it will be use the same API like YouTube and so on. Uh, yeah. So, just a, a rough view of the 
the main concept of Grillo. Uh, as I was saying, uh, there are three concepts uh, involved in how Grillo works. The first one is the source. Uh, sources are basically the source of information, right? For instance, YouTube or Jamendo or your IMDb database. Okay, so it's uh, the wrapper that get access to the content that of information that is out there. The second one is our the media content, the actually the audio, the video, and the image, right? Because right now it's mostly these three types of media that we will handle. Because at the end we will handle only multimedia content. So basically, what is a media? I mean, what is a video? Actually, video you can see a video like a, a you know, like a hash table or a dictionary that is formed by metadata keys, right? Uh, which is in this, uh, in the right. Basically, for instance, a video could be, be formed by a title, for instance, by a, um, the author of the video, the URL where the video is uh, located, just to play it. It can have things like, uh, a, um, is it a favorite or not? I mean, a lot of information that uh, you can provide. So basically, the combination is that uh, Media actually are contains basically metadata case, right? So basically, when, I, when you are providing an audio content, audio, this audio is defined by the keys it has. It has, for instance, the title and artist or album or all the information we want to add to it. And the sources, basically, uh, they create this media. Actually, they have two roles. One of them is creating the media. For instance, the YouTube plugin creates uh, video content, right? And this uh, YouTube, basically, it defines which kind of information can handle. For instance, I can, it can say, okay, I, I'm able to handle the URL, I can, I'm able to handle the title, uh, handle the artist, or so, such information. Um, there are, nevertheless, other sources that actually don't seem create content. But what they do is, with content coming from another sources, I can inject new information. For instance, the IMDb, right? IMDb means that the way that IMDb works is, okay, if I have a video, and the video, I know it's a movie, I can pro provide you all the information that IMDb can provide me. So I go to IMDb, I get the, all the information, I enrich the content of, the, of, this, uh, of, the, of this media, right? So basically, it's the, the way it really works. So, how to use it, I'm going to show, uh, just uh, set uh, two use cases. Totem is one of the best use cases because it fits quite well with what we really is able to provide. Uh, so let's see, let's see. So basically in, in Totem, well, in Totem, it has a plugin for Grillo to use Grillo to, to get content from different places, right? Uh, basically, I have put here some of the sources that uh, Totem is able to, to read, like, uh, for instance, video from Vimeo, for YouTube, for a UMP server, or even for your local disk. Right. And then there are, I, I'm sorry, it, don't, it doesn't see very well, but basically these are two sc screenshots of Totem. You can run it. The first one is the, the browse view in Totem. It's appearing in, in one of the options. Um, basically, it allows you to browse through the uh, content that is provided by, by one of the sources. For instance, you select YouTube, and you can uh, open the tree and um, browse through it. Right. Uh, the other one is basically the, a view for searching content. Uh, it provides you a text field where you can enter, field where you can enter your, the title of the, of the video or what you want to search. For instance, in this case, uh, I think it's searching what we can YouTube, and it provides information. Uh, in this case, it's using the thumbnail of the information, then the title and the author of the, that video. Right. So uh, basically, when you are writing, using Grill to, to write Totem in this case, for this plugin, there are some things that you need to take to have in mind. The first uh, is what you want to show. I mean. I'm going to show only videos, only music. That depends on your application. There are applications that can handle, for instance, music and audio. Uh, I think Totem was doing that in that way on the 
fast. Now it's moving just to show only video because it's um, centered on video content. So basically, you need to define what, what you want to, to show. And then you, you need to define which information I want to have there for that because there are a lot of information, but I don't want to use all the information. So uh, in this case, for instance, in Grillo, there are up to 55 different uh, type of information you can handle. Um, even sources can extend those information. Sources can uh, provide a new, in, new type of information that can be added to this uh, core of, of keys, right? So some of them are, for instance, the URL, the title, the thumbnail, so on. So in this case, in the case of Totem, uh, the rules are I only want to show the videos. So basically, it means that when I use Grillo, uh, all sources come up and say, hey, I'm here, I'm available. So what um, Totten does is, OK, it checks what kind of information is the source able to provide. So for instance, if it can't provide videos, I don't, I mean, I'm not interested in it, so I just ignore it. For instance, if the Flickr source comes up and say, OK, I'm only able to handle, for instance, the uh, image, okay, I ignore it. So I, I'm not going to handle it, use that, that source. Okay. Um, then for those videos, that, those, so, sorry, those sources that provide videos, uh, I need to check what I'm, going, what I'm doing. So if, I, if I'm implementing the browse view, what I want is only those sources that provides the browse uh, feature, right? And it's because uh, uh, all sources in Grillo uh, decides which of the features they can implement. So there are sources that implement the searching, others that, don't, don't, uh, that implement the browse, uh, others that implement other operations. So basically, you can check what of those operations are implemented. The reason why those operations, some operations are implemented and others not is because at the end, uh, the source is just a wrapper of the web service. So if you have a web service that, for instance, doesn't provide a search, it doesn't make sense to, for you to implement the search because the only way to implement that is, you know, caching all the information in your hard disk and search there. And that's totally inefficient. So uh, in, in Grillo, the source doesn't try to do more things that actually the web is service is providing. So in this case, for instance, I'm implementing my browse uh, view. So I check, okay, do you handle the browse? No, okay, I'm ignoring you. In the case of search, I do the same for the, for the search feature. I'm ch I check, okay, does this source provide the, the search? Yes, okay, I will show it in the, my, I will use it in my, in my application. So given that, so basically, yeah, uh, here I write, okay, I'm going to use here the browse and now I'm going to use here the search. The other thing I need to uh, set, as I say, is what kind of information I want to handle, actually. So for instance, in the case of, of a search, as you can see, um, I'm, if you, well, I think it's not very well shown, but if you run Totem and perform a search, you will see that in, in besides the thumbnail, which is something that you can see, be below is the, um, the title of the video and the author of the video. So that's kind of information I want to show. Uh, also, I want to handle the URL because at the end I want to play it, so I also want to handle the URL, but there are a lot of other information that I want to show. Uh, you know, for instance, if I have a GPS information on my uh, uh, content, I don't want to use it, so I just discard it. Or if I have, for instance, uh, well, any other key like uh, favorites or size of, of the video or mime type, whatever other information, I don't want to use it. So as you see, um, in the case of search, I'm defining the information I want to use. And if you take a look at the browse, basically, I'm not showing the author because at the end, this, this view is only showing the title and just the duration. So basically, I don't care about the author, I don't care about finding. So I'm not going to ask for it. Okay. So basically, the, with this information, when you implement, really well, this is just a very small, uh, Screenshot. The idea is that well, the, uh, above is the, all the keys I'm going to use for the search, right? Basically, it's a key list, and I define the list of information I want to show. It is artist, author, uh, 
duration, summary, URL title. Okay. Uh, I'm using artisan author because it depends on the, on the sources. There are some sources that use author, and other sources use artist, so I'm going to use both and just check what I'm going to show. And then below is the, the function to search. So basically, the search is, the API is quite simple. Basically, it gets the, the source, okay, the search source, which is the source I'm going to search. For instance, if I select YouTube, that's the source I'm going to use. It's a G object at, at the end. Um, then I have the, the text I'm going to search, for instance, the Wadic. I'm going to see Wadic. The Below the search case, as well are the list above. It's just a list, the list of all the information I want to show. And, well, the options, which basically allows you to control more um, how the, the search must be performed, right? Uh, I will show some examples later. And then the callback. Basically, it means that um, when the when you start the search, uh, the callback will be invoked every time it finds a result. It will be invoked through this callback. So basically, uh, it will you will receive this uh, the media found with all the information you are asking for in these callbacks. Okay. So if I ask for ten elements, I will receive I mean at least uh, ten callbacks or less if there are no such you know, such amount of elements. Well, this is basically the, the search, it's, and the browser is quite similar. I mean, the browser is exactly the same. It uh, has the same parameters and mostly the same. So as you see, it's quite simple because I'm uh, not, uh, I'm forgetting or isolating the API for the web service. I, I'm uh, making it more simple. I don't need to, to handle with REST or handle with XML or whatever. Everything is done by the, by the grill. So as it is now, there are two problems, right, to be solved. Uh, the first one is that uh, not all the information I would want to show are handled by the, by the source. For instance, well, in this case, uh, in YouTube, is it's done, but just think, figure out a um, uh, uh, plugin of web service that provides video, but that doesn't provide the thumbnail, right? Doesn't provide a thumbnail. So that's one of the problems we need to solve. What happens with the information that is not provided uh, by, the, by the source? Another example could be, for instance, if you are writing at without them, but if you are writing at your uh, set of box application, you want to show the, for instance, the, the retro of a movie, okay? Uh, probably you are browsing through your local disk and you, don't ha you have there your, your video, your movie, but you don't have the, uh, I mean, it doesn't store the, the uh, the director. So how to have this, this kind of, of missing information? And the other point is about what happens with keys that are quite expensive to retrieve. Uh, an example is, in the case of, of YouTube, uh, well, if you check how YouTube works the internally, it means that well, when you want to uh, search for a content, you go to the web service, you perform the search, and it writes on XML with all the information, right? The problem is that that information doesn't store the URL. In order to get the URL, you need to go to that entry, create a special URL uh, page, and go there to get the real uh, URL. So it means that, for instance, you are asking for to have 200 elements, for instance. Instead of, if you don't ask for URL, you, there will only be one request, right? Because there, and, Download, but you ask for the URL will be uh, two, uh, hun yeah, 201 uh, requests. The first one for getting the XML, and then one request per each uh, entry, just to get the URL, right? And of course, that's quite in, uh, inefficient because my application will be, I mean, will be showing all the elements quite slowly, even when I don't want to use the URL, right? Because at the end, I don't want to show the URL. The URL, I want to use it later. So that's a problem. Okay, so basically, uh, will help you in solving this um, this uh, problem just using some flags to control how Grillo should uh, retrieve the content. So basically, the, the 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 normal way of is just you go to, for instance, just just put an example YouTube, right? You with the 
normal flag basically goes to YouTube, it gets the content and tries to, um, to provide all the, the kids, all the information they has. So uh, if there are some information that YouTube can provide, for instance, let's say a speech key, a key that uh, YouTube can provide, basically it will be empty, that key, YouTube can provide it. But if there are some information that takes a lot of time to uh, retrieve, it will be retrieved anyway. So basically it means that, okay, I want these keys, all these keys uh, from this source. Right. The second uh, flag is fast only. Fast only means that, okay, it's like the normal way, but I'm telling the source, okay, there is some key that it takes too much time to retrieve it, please don't do it. And this, if takes much more time, actually depends on the, on the source, right? Why? Because well, it's clear that going to YouTube is quite slower than getting the, the data from, from your hard disk. But the point is that from the YouTube point of view, getting the URL gets more time because you need at least two requests to the service. Regarding the, for instance, other keys, other keys that only request one request. Right. So for instance, getting the artist, the, sorry, the title of the video, it means just one request, getting the XML, and so and enough. If you are um, asking for URL, or maybe for thumbnail, in some, case, in some cases, some sources getting the thumbnail is something that requires an extra step. So to, to avoid to make the stuff uh, too much slow, I just use the flag. Okay. And then there is the, the wonderful one, which is the full, uh, the full flag. Basically, full flag says, okay, I want to get this content from YouTube, but make all the possible, I mean, ask other sources if it's possible, just to fill all the information I'm requesting you. So it means that it's the case where all the sources cooperate together, like in the example I show in the, in the beginning, all the sources collaborate together to provide information. So for instance, since I, I'm browsing, let's say, uh, not in Totem, but for instance, in, in Media Player application, I'm browsing Jamendo, and I, I say, okay, I want to show, uh, you know, the title, the thumbnail, and I want to show also the lyrics. Jamendo doesn't provide the lyrics. So if you use the full, basically, what the system is going to do is, okay, let's search who is providing this information, uh, let's make, all the possible to provide this information to the user. So the user doesn't need to, uh, you know, to deal how to integrate all the information and do it by hand. It can still, if they want. But this provides a, a way of, of doing it. So how to use it, this? Well, the idea is, first of all, uh, I'm going to use the, the search because it's the, something that you can see in your, in your laptop when you use Totem. Uh, the first thing is that I'm going to request content by chunks. I mean, uh, even I, if I can request 1,000 elements, I just want to ask, let's say, for instance, uh, 100 elements. At least some ele elements that fits in my screen, right, to show them. So if the user scrolls down, I will request more information. So this way I'm not making uh, stuff so slow, asking for elements that maybe the user is go not going to check. So that's the first, the first step, first point. The second point is that in the, the, this uh, request of the content, I want to show the information as fast as possible using the fast only. Why? Because probably the user can uh, see the information with some missing fields, let's say for instance the thumbnail, but uh, maybe he's, he's not interested in, the, in this uh, information. We want to scroll. So what we want is not block everything, until the operation ends. So basically, they say, okay, I don't, right now, don't provide, my, don't provide me these uh, slow keys. Okay, so once the, uh, this op operation is performed, and if the user is not doing a scroll, let's say, let's do something in background, which is okay. Now, in the case of Totem, okay, I have this video, which is visible, the user is showing, is uh, seeing it in, their, in the side pane, so okay, let's ask for all the information that I didn't get from the previous content. So I do it, and I do the same for each element. You know, but in the moment that the user scrolls, I stop doing it. 
right? Because I, maybe the, the, that video disappears from the screen, so it doesn't make sense to get, for instance, the family because user is not going to see it. So it is done in, in, in the in, a, in background, right? There is, well, the, the special case is the URL keys because the URL key, because actually we are not showing the URL in the screen. So what we do is the same, but when the user double click on the element. So when the user double click on the element and we check, okay, the, it has no URL, yeah, because it was already slow key, so it was not provided before. Okay, now let's provide, let's search for it, get it using the full, full uh, flag, so I can play it. Right. So basically, this is, is um, a way of using the flags from Grillo. How Grillo helps you to integrate uh, and handle the information that can be slower, faster. Uh, and basically, it's an, an algorithm that most applications, uh, when writing the media player, and you are very concerned about the performance and the UI responsibility, responsiveness, you can use. Okay. Well, um, let's see. Let's see just an example how the full uh, works. Okay. Um, basically, the, the full flag, or to know how actually real uh, real integrates information. Uh, Let's say that I'm browsing the, for instance, your local hard disk, right? You have your content indexed, and there is a, a tracker, a Grillo plugin using tracker, right? And goes to use tracker to provide your information, like you can you can provide from YouTube. And it's just a plugin. So just think of you have your MP3 well target, but you don't have the thumbnail, okay? So you are browsing with Totten. Well, we thought in not now because I only had the video, but in the past, you could browse audio content. So just think, think of, figure out that you are browsing the con local content and you want to show the thumbnail. Okay, thumbnail is not provided by, by that, uh, by that uh, source. So how it works? Well, when you use the full uh, flag, okay, what well, it's going to do is, okay, first I ask all the information to tracker, right? So I create um, audio content that has all the information that tracker knows. Now, I check that, and I see that, okay, no, okay, the thumbnail is missing. So what Grillo does is, okay, who is able to provide uh, thumbnail? So basically, it takes the audio content, the, this media audio which is created, and start to ask each one who can provide that key. So there can be two, actually three answers when you ask a source. It can be, okay, uh, I, I can't handle this information. If you provide me a URL, this media, I can provide it. So, uh, okay, you are discarded. The second one could be, hey, yes, I can provide you information. You are asking me for thumbnail. I check the media audio, I can provide that information. Okay, I'm going to ask you then the thumbnail. So that's, that source will uh, integrate the thumbnail in the media audio, right? And the end, the media audio is returned to the, to the user. Uh, to the application that ask it for the information. The third case is when the source can handle it, can hand, handle the thumbnail, but you know, uh, there is no so much information on, on the media to do it. Uh, an example is uh, there is a source that can provide uh, the album's cover art, you know, and doing it means that it needs to know the artist and the album, right? So it knows the artist, you know the album, it can go, for instance, to last VM and fetch there the, uh, this uh, information. So basically, it will say, okay, I can because I don't have this information. So what um, the core does is, okay, let's do in a recursive way, ask for the artist and for the, for the, for the uh, album title, right? So if we go to the tracker, and, and ask for it. I mean, if your is not there, okay, let's ask, okay, what is the, the artist name and which is the album name? Okay, now I have it, so I go again to, to this uh, cover art source and ask, hey, now I have it. Can you provide me it? Yes, I can, or at least I can try. Okay, so I go just, the source goes to last FM, it checks, oh, I have the thumbnail, I put it. Right, if not, it can't. Okay, I say, okay, 
I couldn't do it. Okay, let's try with another source. So it, this is done uh, totally transparent for the user. The user this doesn't need to, to uh, have this use case. So this is probably this, the totem is the way of, the most common way of using Grillo, right? Which is using the operations that Grillo provides, uh, to uh, uh, use them to get the content, the searching or browsing. A different case uh, is Gnome Music. Uh, I'm, not going, I'm not going to talk about Gnome Music, but about the relation with Grillo. So the first thing is that uh, at this moment, Gnome Music gets the content for your local disk, right? Uh, but eventually, it, it would like, you know, if you don't have the, your thumbnails in disk, your cover arts in disk, get them from LastFM or whatever other uh, place. So uh, this is a basically a screenshot where uh, it's showing there the, the album, the, the title of the album, and I think the artist, right? So what's the problem here? I, well, as you say, it's only going to use one specific source, which is Tracker, right? It's not going to use, uh, for instance, Jamendo. Only Tracker, in this case. Well, it's Tracker because we want to show exactly the title of the, art, of the album and the uh, artist name. So that's the Tracker can provide. I mean, we can't go to the file system already because that would mean, you know, to decode MP3 but at the end, we want to, to sort things. So it will be quite difficult. So basically, we are going to use the tracker. So the problem here is that uh, music actually defines its own structure. Uh, in Totem, if you check Totem, in the case of Browse, if you check the, the tree that is created of, to Browse, and basically, that, that tree is defined by the, by the source. A source defines the tree it wants to provide just to do the Browse. But in this case, uh, in case of Gnome Music, we want to use our own structure. You know, we want to use, use uh, album for level, an artist for level, and song for level. And uh, the, if you check the tracker plugin, it doesn't provide that, that structure. It provides a different one. So that's our first problem we have. The second one is that, uh, you know, we don't have in Grillo at this moment, or at least, the concept of artist of album. Uh, Basically, in Grillo, um, all the content that are not final content, you know, there are no audio or image or, or um, videos, are called boxes. Boxes like a container that you can browse inside and get other boxes or music. For instance, you can see, you can uh, think of in a box like an artist. You know, you have an art or an album. You have an album which is like a container that contains songs. Right, so album is a box, and the songs are the Grillo Media audio, right? So we don't have that, uh, that information, that, sorry, that concept. And the other one is that, well, uh, Gnome Music wants to, to sort the results, but there are a lot of ways of sorting them, and, pro, and what um, the Grillo is providing is not, doesn't suit the requirements. So, uh, this is an example of, of some of the screenshots to show uh, all that information. Uh, you know, so basically, it's the, the first one is the albums, which pro shows only the, all the albums. The second one basically provides the artists, and then for each artist, provides all the albums. But you can't get that information from Grillo directly, right? Uh, because it doesn't have that structure. It doesn't have the structure that if you browse through artists, you get the name of the artist, and if you browse through the artist, you get the name of the of the albums, right? And you place on the album, you get the name of the, of the songs, right? The, the, the tracker plugin is providing a different one. Yeah, we can think, okay, let's change the structure to do that. But if you do that, then probably another application will have a very different uh, requirements, will not, won't fit. So uh, how to fix it? Well, there's actually two ways of, of of fixing this. The, the first one is, okay, as I want to use my own structure and I'm getting the elements from Tracker, let's use Tracker directly, right? So I go to Tracker and use Sparkle to get the, uh, the, all the music I want in the order I want, whatever, okay? That's fine. And in fact, uh, Gnome Photos does that. It's use Tracker 
to get the, the content right from from that. So what happens with the missing information that we want to show? For instance, the cover art, right? Because we are losing that uh, that uh, feature from Grillo. So one solution could be okay. Uh, let's uh, with this information, let's create a Grillo media manually, and then I will ask to to Grillo, okay, I have this media, please provide me the cover art. I can do it actually, right? So that's one way. The other way is uh, telling Grillo. Sorry, the degree of track is how to construct the medias. Okay, so it would be uh, great to say, okay, when you browse in the artist, please uh, uh, create media content in this way. So I'm getting the albums. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm telling them, or for instance, I'm telling, okay, if you ask you for these artists, please, when you are create the artist, I would like that, it, for instance, the duration is the total duration of the, all the songs from the artist. So in Grillo, you can do it. Uh, and this is a feature that basically short circuit uh, the Grillo and goes directly to this web service. Um, this is a function that called query, which is exactly like the search, but instead of specifying a uh, text to search, you specify a query, right? So, the problem is that um, this is quite very specific to the plugin. The query format is very specific to the plugin. So, uh, for instance, the UPnP source it has a query where you can cook your own uh, results, and the query language is basically like uh, this UPnP language, the IDL or something like that. I don't remember exactly the name. In the case of Tracker, this is a, a Sparker query, right? So. Uh, this query is basically, you pass this Sparkle query that you were using above, okay? I, instead of using above, I just pass to Grillo. And with this query, I'm going to tell, okay, how to create the content. So in this case, for instance, the, uh, in order to create content, basically, uh, when I do a, uh, this, the select of the columns, the first one I say, okay, I want this to be a video or a, or a box, and then I'm going to map Okay, each column to each uh, metadata key in Grillo. So basically, I'm saying, okay, the duration in Grillo will be this, the third column in this query. Okay, and then I have the query here. So in this case, uh, other than that, it works like the, uh, the other, uh, like Totem. Once I ask query, I can use the full flag. So it uses tracker, it creates the elements, so it checks if some uh, uh, content is missing and it adds it to the to this element. Okay, so basically, uh, I'm not showing here an example because actually the, the Sparkle query is quite big. And I can't reduce it because it will fit the screen. But that's the idea: is that the I use the, the a Sparkle query to get the content, and that Sparkle is basically telling how to build the the, the result. And other than that, it works like. Uh, the way you know. So basically, yeah, this is very specific to the plugin, but at least it has a way of, okay, I know this is very specific, but I want to have the uh, choice of, you know, fully exploit all the features that the backend is providing to me without using this common API uh, that Google provides. So these are mostly the two use cases uh, we are using right now. But there is, of course, only another use case that you can use in your application, for instance. Uh, let's say you are uh, doing an application that you want to allow to upload content, let's say to a service like YouTube. So basically, you are browsing your content in, in the local and you want to up upload it to YouTube. So basically, it's, there is a function which is basically called a store, which means exactly like the, like the uh, browse function, but instead of Getting content, it just upload content there. So basically, with that function, you can implement um, an application that is able to provide content to, I mean, to store content on the on the web service. A different one is, for instance, the a media player with audio resume um, uh, feature. You know, you have played your song, and you want to uh, record or remember where the last time you were playing it. So basically, 
the usual way of doing it right now is okay. I was playing when I stop. I get the you know the where is the checkpoint from the streamer or whatever. I store it in in my local disk or my local database with the name of the video. So next time I'm going to play it, I can recover it. Okay. So in the, in the, using Willow is more easier because there is a key in Willow which is called playback interrupted time. Okay. So basically, if I want uh, to show a video, I just Ask for all information pl plus the playback interpret time. And playback interpret time contains the uh, where should I resume the, the, con the playing. Uh, so basically, I'm playing it. Now I need to update it. So, well, updating it means that I'm going to the, this media, real media. I change the value of the playback interpret time and use a function which is basically quite simple is store metadata to store that, that information. So basically, the, the way it works is. Okay, uh, it will use all the sources. For instance, maybe the playback uh, is not available in YouTube. For instance, you are playing a video from YouTube. It's clear that playback interrupted time is not in YouTube. What it happens is because it's it is uh, storing in the local hard disk in the database, which is another plugin which provides information like IMDb, but in this case provides the playback uh, interrupted time. And from user point of view, it doesn't matter. It's total uh, hiding. So basically, is what it's going to do. It's going to take this uh, key, um, update the database. So next time it recovers it, uh, it will be had the new value, right? So basically, these are some use cases that you can uh, do with uh, with Willow. There are quite a few more, but I mean, this probably for me is not enough. So yeah. So uh, just to end. Uh, this, this is an, a full example of an application Willow. Um, is writing in Python using the introspection bindings. And what this application does is, you know, I want to create a PLS list with my favorite content. So basically, this program you specify a search term, for instance, you know, uh, I don't know, Metallica or whatever other uh, artist, and it checks, it searches all the audio content. In all the sources available there, you know, in Jamendo or in your local disk or in UPnP, it checks in all the places and this creates a uh, playlist, right? And it's only 28 lines, okay, including some comments there. So the main, uh, the main parts are the in the line 14, it create, defines the information you want to store. Okay? This is basically in PLS is a duration title and the URL, okay? Then, uh, in line 18, I'm using these options like uh, mentioned before, just to store how many elements I want. Okay, I'm proceeding to 200, and then I use this function, which basically means search in all the plugins which, which are there. Okay. And the result in this case is not a synchronous function. In this case, it's a sync one. So the result is a glist. So for each element, I'm just checking. Okay, if this media is an audio, I uh, you know I print it. Getting the duration, getting the title, and getting the URL. Right. So when I run this program, I basically create uh, uh, a playlist. And as you see, I don't care about if it's YouTube, Jamendo, or whatever. Okay. So I put here some of the resources that you can use. Uh, and we have the wiki. We have a source code in Git Genome. Uh, we have also the code in Gitorious and GitHub. Uh, you can clone it, uh, work further. We have the IRC or channel and basically the mailing list. Uh, so, yeah, so that's all. And if you want to ask something. Hey, uh, basically I saw that the Barsh had a good progress on GNOME, GNOME Photos, and I really want to know if, if you think you can use the, I can use the same mechanism, the Barsh, uh, in the same way that the Barsh did the implementation uh, to support uh, RDO or Spotify on Grillo. Um, well, there is, 
I mean, there are some kind of sources that right now at this moment we can use in Willow. Uh, special, the special one are the radios, uh, the radio contents, because when you are browsing, for instance, the UPnP server, you get a bunch of content, and there is no restriction about start playing it a one element and then play the next or play the previous one. Don't have any restriction. You can play in order you want. In the case of uh, things like Spotify, the point is that uh, first you only can get just a, just a small window of the what songs are going to be played. And what you want, can do is uh, I can play one, but I can play the previous one, or I can skip one, but not uh, going back. You know this. You can only go forwards in the time. So right now we don't have a way. I mean, you can do it. You can implement a plugin. But the point is that you are not telling the user, "Hey, you can do. You can go back," because there is no way of doing it. So probably will be require some new concepts, maybe like uh, Grillo radio stuff or something like that. That is specify. Okay, I, this is a radio. You can go. You know, you can play it. Um, but once you start to play it, you can go back or you only have a very small window of how many elements you can ask for. Yeah, I got your point. OK. Thank you. Welcome. OK. So no more questions. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>